Hi everyone, so excited you've come to join us again today. We are going to talk about Italy. Some yummy, yummy spaghetti, can't wait. Hi, I'm Robbie. Hi, I'm Susie. Hi, I'm Miss Carly, the teacher. It's time for Home Time with Robbie and Susie. I have hands. I have hands. Watch me clap. Oh, what a miracle am I I have feet I have feet Watch me stand Watch me stand Oh, what a miracle am I Oh, what a miracle Oh, what a miracle Every little part of me so very special, there's nobody quite like me. I have arms, I have arms. Watch me swing, watch me swing. Oh, what a miracle am I! I have legs, I have legs. They can bend and stretch. So very special, there's nobody quite like me. I have a spine, I have a spine, it can twist and bend, it can twist and bend. Oh, what a miracle am I! I have a one foot, I have a one foot, watch me balance. So excited you have joined us again today as we continue to learn about Europe. Today we are focusing on Italy. When I think of Italy, I think of Italian food. It's so, so yummy. I'm sure you've had Italian food before. Have you ever had spaghetti and meatballs or a big bowl of pasta? Well, I have a song about cooking pasta. Would you like to sing it with me? Bubble, 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 pasta pot, pasta pot. Boil me up some pasta, boil me up some pasta, nice and hot, nice and hot. There is plenty, there is plenty, pasta pot, pasta pot. There's enough for supper, there's enough for supper, nice and hot, nice and hot. What a great song. Let's sing it again. Stand up, get your actions ready. Have you got your bubbles? Here we go. Bubble, 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 bubble. Pasta pot, pasta pot. Boil me up some pasta, boil me up some pasta. Nice and hot, <laughs> nice and hot. There is plenty, there is plenty. Pasta pot, pasta pot. There's enough for supper, there's enough for supper. Nice and hot nice and hot. Wow, I wonder what else we're going to learn about Italy today. Hi friends, I am really excited to explore Italy with you. Have you ever been to Italy? I've been to Italy and I remember it was so beautiful and I went to the city of Rome and there were lots and lots of amazing sights to see. Well, I have a book about Mr. Chicken, who goes to explore Rome. Would you like to read it with me? Okay, so this is Mr. Chicken here, and this is a place called the Colosseum. 
So let's go and explore together. Even as a baby, Mr. Chicken was different to other boys and girls. Instead of playing games, he dreamt about life in ancient Rome. Now he was a grown up and off to Rome on his first ever visit. How exciting. Mr. Chicken was flying business class for the fine food and extra leg room. Just before landing, he caught a glimpse of his first Roman ruin. Magnifico, he cried. Mr. Chicken arrived in Rome incognito and all excited. Incognito means he's disguised, so he's wearing sunglasses. He'd hired a guide named Federica to show him some ruins and help him meet some real Romans. Buongiorno, Signor Polo, called Frederica, recognizing Mr. Chicken straight away. Welcome to Rome. He spoke some Italian. Climb aboard my Vespa, she said, and hold on to your hat. Mr. Chicken did what he was told and off they went. His childhood dream was about to begin. I wonder what they're going to see. Soon they were in the middle of Rome, crossing Piazza Venezia. Look, said Frederica, il Colosseo. Mr. Chicken couldn't wait to get up close and touch it. Look at all the traffic there in Italy in Rome. And when he did, he took a photo to prove that he had been there. Of course, there is more to Rome than just the ruins, said Frederica. Now you must taste Italian ice cream. We call it gelato. There are lots of flavors. Coco, cafe, cassata, malone and menta. Pesca and fragola. And that's just a few. Mmm, delicio, said Mr. Chicken, licking his lips. Look at all that gelato. Oh my goodness, look at those gelato cones. I think he's trying every flavour. The Roman tour continued with Mr. Chicken doing his best to remember his manners. Frederica parked outside the Pantheon so Signor Polo could take a picture. But there wasn't time to dawdle for there was much she wished to show him. Look at all those people wanting to see. Like the Vatican, where she and Mr. Chicken joined the crowd all waiting to see the Pope. Look at that. However, Mr. Chicken was hot and hungry. My goodness, he's trying to lick someone's ice cream. So Frederica took him to the Trevi Fountain for a dip before lunch. Soon Mr. Chicken had a big decision to make. He's swimming in the fountain. Would he have spaghetti or cannelloni, penne or tortellini? Or maybe even pasta alla papalina? Mr. Chicken studied the menu and chose the tagliatelle. My goodness, he's put all that pasta on his head. Next, after a quick stop by the river, Tiber, Frederica left him at a church. Join the queue while I arrange a treat for tonight, she said. I'll collect you later. Love all these pictures of him enjoying his pasta. Mr. Chicken lined up as instructed, put a wing in the mouth of truth and waited. After all that sightseeing, he needed a nap, which turned into a deep sleep. Looks like he's fallen asleep right there. Suddenly, Mr. Chicken was back in ancient Rome. He was an emperor in a toga making speeches and a guest of honour being fanned at a feast. His face and big bottom were on the coins. and statues and pots, even a table. Everywhere, Mr. Chicken went in his chariot. Romans cheered. Then this lovely dream turned into a nasty nightmare. <gasps> oh. 
Mr. Chicken was all alone in the Colosseum with a hungry monster. And then when he was chased by gladiators waving their tridents. It looked like Mr. Chicken's trip to Rome was in ruins. That is, until he heard, wake up, Signor Polo, wake up. It was Frederica back with her Vespa. Phew. Enough rest, she said. It's time for my surprise. Would you like to drive? Frederica held onto Mr. Chicken's hat with one hand and pointed directions with the other. Mr. Chicken didn't know it yet, but Frederica's family was having him for dinner. He was the guest of honour. Meet my family, said Frederica, Viola, Romano, Lucia and Christina. My mother, Anna, Luca, my father and sister, Alicia. Buono sera, said Mr. Chicken, proud to have perfected his pronunciation. In between eating, Mr. Chicken told tales about his thrilling travels and learnt a little bit about Frederica's family. How lovely it was to meet and eat with a real Roman family. But all too soon, it was time to say goodbye. On the way to the airport, Mr. Chicken had a last lick of his favourite flavour. Then with a chow and a peck on both cheeks, his day in Rome was over. I've never met anyone like you, Signor Polo, said Frederica. Grazie, said Mr. Chicken. Arrivederci. That means thank you and goodbye. Back in the air, Mr. Chicken spread his wings and put his feet up. He'd seen ruins and met some Romans. Best of all, he'd made some real Roman friends. I think he had a really good time in Rome. What was your favourite part? My favourite part was when he ate the spaghetti and he put it all over his head. It looked like he was having so much fun. Do you know what? I have a song about spaghetti because spaghetti is a type of pasta and it's my favourite. Would you like to learn it with me? Okay, it goes like this. It's a very funny song. Okay, it starts like this. On top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese, I lost my poor meatball when somebody sneezed. Achoo! <gasps> It rolled off the table and onto the floor. And then my poor meatball, it ran out of the door. Oh my goodness. He lost his meatball off his spaghetti. Ran off the table and out the door. Would you like to sing it again? Okay, see if you can remember. You ready? Goes like this. On top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese. I lost my poor meatball when somebody sneezed. Achoo! It rolled off the table and onto the floor. And then my poor meatball, it ran out of the door. Oh my goodness. I would hate if my meatball ran off my spaghetti. Okay. Was that fun? I really enjoyed that. Okay, well let's see what we're going to do next. I think we're gonna to continue to explore Italy and maybe explore some pasta. Wow, Lauren, what a funny story. Mr. Chicken made me laugh. He was so funny. I loved where he had all that spaghetti and pasta all over his head and body. It was hilarious. Well, in fact, I have some pasta today. I've cooked some green pasta and some twirly twirly red pasta and some long skinny pasta. And I was hoping, because I know how much you love sensory and feeling things, that you would be able to play with this and then later we might be able to eat it. But would you like to have a play? I would love to. I'm really excited to. So I might get some of this ooh, green pasta and swirly pasta and I'm going to pop it into the bowl. Just like that. It looks very gooey. It does. It does. It feels ooh, ooey gooey, but it feels really, really good at the same time. And it feels like different textures as well. So some are soft and some are a bit rough. 
and I, I love exploring the twirls and you can even get the twirls and even pull them apart like that yum what are you going to be doing today Anna well I have this not cooked pasta and some clay and I am going to build something I don't know what but I'm going to have a try so I'm going to make the clay nice and soft by playing with it so it's pliable and then I'm going to start with a good base so I'm going to roll it up the palm of my hand and make a nice ball another way to roll it is with you pinch pinch it with your fingers and then roll it with this finger like this and then it was a better ball okay so I've got my basis and now I'm going to stick some pasta in one Two. Oh, we'll see how tall. Oh my goodness, it's go. standing up by itself. It is. I think it might need something in between. So I'm going to break some pasta and put a brace in between. And that pasta is all hard and crunchy, isn't it? Yes. It's not cooked yet, so it's been dried. Actually, how do you make pasta? Maybe we could show our friends. Well, to make pasta is you use ingredients like flour and water and salt and, and, you act and eggs and you actually mix it all together and you roll it out and as you can see here, this is actually how you make pasta. So some people roll it out and they roll it into balls just like you're doing with your clay or nice and they flat. pinch, they make it flat and pinch the sides as well and can put cheese inside it. Mm. Then other times they use machines like this, the pasta machine, and they feed it through and they roll a handle and it sometimes can come out like spaghetti like this or like this or they can put it through a special machine that will curl it as well just like these ones that I'm playing with and then once it's gone through the machine they then cook it and as you can see here in this picture you can see all the different types of pasta and so once they cook it then they can put a sauce or you can just have it with cheese or you can just have it with butter or you can just eat it plain if you like as you can see, this is one of my favourite spaghetti, Ooh. just like Mr. Chicken had in his story. That's right. And when they make the tube ones, like the green, they put it through a tube and they come out and then cut, chop, cut, chop, cut, chop. as they go. I like this one, how it's actually on an angle and you can see through it too. So there's lots of different ways you can play with your pasta. So you can use them as binoculars or you can use them like this, how I'm just using it as a sensory bin and using my fingers to explore. And then with this one here with the pasta, some of these are a little bit stuck together and I actually enjoy pulling them apart like this. Wow. Just like that. And then you can do lots of different things with it. You can wrap it around your finger like this. Or you can even get another piece and you can twist so you can make your own pasta. So you can twist it around and around and around. Just like that. Twirl, twirl, twirl. So it kind of looks like this pasta as well. Or you can do lots of different things. You can make pictures with it. So this one I might make a circle. Just like that. So you can make shapes with them. Love it. Oh, I love what you're doing. You're making some great shapes too. Thank you. And this one here, I'm going to make a, I think maybe a triangle. So you can do lots. Well, that one almost looks like a love heart. And a circle. Do you like pasta to eat pasta, Anna? I love to eat pasta. In fact, at my house, we eat pasta at least two times a week, just with cheese on top. <laughs> Sometimes we have some yummy tomato sauce with it that we make. But our favourite is spaghetti bolognese. That's my favourite too. That is my very, very favourite. And my mum makes the best spaghetti bolognese. I think so. Absolutely. <laughs> well, the other day we had some yummy gnocchi as well, which is potato. So it's potato pasta? Yes. And we even had roasted pumpkin gnocchi too. 
Oh, wow. There's lots of different ways you can have pasta and so many shapes and sizes and ways you can serve it with mm -hmm. cheese, with sauce, with sometimes they have like a cabanara sauce, which is like a creamy or mm -hmm. bacon with mushroom sauce. Sometimes we just have pasta and snow peas and pomegranate and bacon. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Yum. I wonder if I can actually do my name. I can cut it in half and then do a A little bit smaller. A l l l for Lauren. You can play with pasta at home as well. You can eat it afterwards, or you can also explore why you're having dinner. Wow. Oh, oh, it's oh, like it's the gonna... Leaning Tower of Pisa, it's falling over. Oh my goodness, whoop. Lucky the Leaning Tower of Pisa keeps standing, but my house is not standing very well at all. I think you've done such a good job. Whoa. It's okay, I'm going to turn to something else. Have mm. you been to Italy before where pasta is from? No, I haven't. Have you? I have. I have. And I've had their pasta and I had their spaghetti. Not as good as my mum's. <laughs> and I've had pizza from there. That's oh. Italian too. But I really did enjoy all the different types of pasta. And it was so fresh with lots of fresh vegetables. And I had been to some of the places that Mr. Chicken had gone, such as the Trevi Fountain. What? And I didn't go to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but I went to Venice and a few other places that I ate pasta at every single destination. Because in Italy, they eat pasta a lot, do they? They do. They eat pasta all the time. It's the main thing on their menu. I would be eating a lot of pizza if I lived there too. Mm -hmm. I love pizza. Their pizza had a lot of uh, vegetables on it, actually and salad spinach. on their pizza, spinach and rocket and it prosciutto. was, yeah, prosciutto and surprisingly in Italy you, you eat a lot of cold food as well, oh. so cold meats and you eat meat for breakfast actually, you eat prosciutto and like salami for breakfast. Really? It was very interesting to be a part of that culture but my favourite part was the buildings like some of those buildings you had. Did you see the Colosseum? I did see the Colosseum. Wow, I, I, I tried to build the Colosseum, but it didn't work out very well. Instead, the Leaning Tower of Pisa happened. <laughs> but wow, I'd love to see the Colosseum. Such an old, beautiful building. It was very, very old. You had to be very careful there. And next to it, a lot of people don't know, is there's other ruins there from ancient Rome. Really? And I really loved exploring them. And you could go see where the previous kings or they called them Caesars lived. Wow. And that was very interesting to see all their artwork. Twist, twist, twist. Was the artwork old or was there artwork that was new? It was very, very, very old. Really? It was actually painted on their walls. Oh. Yep. So it was In called the church? Al, it was called Al Fresco. Oh. So it was on or fresca, fresca maybe. It was called Fresca, and so it was like these paintings that were done on the clay walls on the inside, and they were quite sophisticated, yet they were very, very old. Wow. What does sophisticated mean, Lauren? Sophisticated mean it was quite modern for that time, how ancient it was. Wow. Yeah. I've built a triangle. That's all that I can build today. It keeps <laughs> falling over. But I'm keep trying and enjoying having a try. I wonder what you would be able to build. Definitely. And I've made some lots of shapes and I've really enjoyed pulling apart the spaghetti. So maybe you can do that at home when you have your dinner as well. I can't wait to see what it is that you have made. Whether you make it at Little Miracles Preschool or at home with your family so many amazing things you can make and if you don't have clay maybe some play-doh could work as well mm -hmm. what about what's some other paths that they could use uh, well you can use your um, play-doh to make pasta as <gasps> well so you can roll and make your own pasta and some other pastas you can use there's so many different types so when you go shopping with your mum and dad next, you can go down the pasta aisle and maybe see what other types of pasta there is because there's so many shapes and different sizes as well. That is a good idea. In fact, when my family and I go shopping, we do try and pick new pasta. At the moment, my children love the dinosaur pasta. You might be able to find it. 
or the zoo animal pasta. Mm -hmm. They love it. I love the shells. They look like shells or yep. the bows. They look like bows and I love ravioli too. Oh yeah. yes. Well, we have had such a great day learning all about Rome with you and we can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Bye.